what is it going to take for the people of this nation, for the people across the world, to wake up, to regain their conscience that they have given up, to put down their TV, their newspapers, and to begin talking to their neighbors again, to find out what life is really about and what makes life worthwhile. Jake would say to you, learn, become the kind of person that we were meant to be. We are all human beings capable of so much, so much kindness, so much caring, and so much creativity that we have allowed to go by the wayside. And there are those who would control us until we become like robots and lose all that we've been given, all that is good inside of us for security. It can't be that way, and if it is, then we'll all be enslaved. So we need to wake up. We need to turn our thoughts to the light. I visited Jake today, and that's the last thing he told to me. He said, Mom, he said, tell the people to become who they were meant to be, to turn their thoughts to the light, to think of freedom, to envision freedom, and to be able to make a change through our thoughts. But it takes more than one. It takes the masses. And so I reach out to all of you, and I ask you to wake up, and to the patriots everywhere, to the Oath Keepers, the Three Percenters, the Twelve Percenters, whoever you are, to be there. Like Jake said when he called after Lavoie's death, he said, Mom, where's all the people that were here? Where's all the ones that said they would stand behind us? Have they all gone? Is there not anybody with enough courage to, to do what needs to be done in our nation? But more than anything, through all of this, I've learned that we have to be positive and we have to be caring and we have to be sharing with people and we have to love them. It saddens me more than anything to know that all this is being carried out by fellow human beings against other human beings. You know, the, those who would control us wouldn't be able to do it without the hands of so many helpers. And it's these helpers that are turning against their own people. And I have to ask why. Is not every human important and every life important? And we must pray for those who have chose the darkness over the light. And pray that they will see the truth and be able to claim their conscience back and become who they are. Jake wrote in his first letter, and I'd like to share it with you. He said, I would like to share some words from Jake's first letter from prison he wrote. If you could let them know many, many things and tell them to keep waking up searching the truth and to defend each other in living life and knowing each one of us are powerful, loving beings of light. Tell them to know and research the real meaning of the Republic. I miss life in words that I can't explain. How is Frisbee, fishing, concerts going? Sorry for missing your concerts. I wanted to watch you sing so badly, but some people just don't care of other people's lives. The feeling of control, power, and money being controlled are used as tools. I have felt that, and it's a sickening feeling. Why would anybody want to control other people's lives? It's just hard talking about living life. 
I'm connected to it in a way that most people wouldn't understand. Like dancing, swimming, playing stay, Sister Winkler's farewell float for the parade, traveling, enjoying summer, coaching frisbee, setting up for our annual dances we put on in Sanders County Fair, etc. It breaks my heart to even think that I will be forced against my own will. I might miss those most precious moments and memories is sickening. Each one of you live life to the fullest. Love each other. And those were Jake's own words. One thing Jake told me when he got home was that when they shut down the Burns School because of fear of the militants, as they called them, a lot of the children came over to the refuge and sat at Ammon's knee as he taught them the Constitution. And to me, that's something that is so vital, that the government schools no longer think is vital. The Constitution is not taught to our children. It's not understood by many, many grown-ups. It's not even understood by those who take an oath to protect the Constitution. And so I make a plea to those elected officials. I've had a lot of officials say they would be there, said they would stand behind us, but when push comes to shove, where are they? And to the sheriffs, I was, we were um, pressured by a sheriff to turn our son in because he said he would be safe then. And I wonder, is Ammon safe? Is Ryan safe? Is Pete Santelli safe? Safe from what? From solitary confinement or abstination from food? I don't know what you consider safe, but Lavoie knew what it meant to live free and he took freedom over being safe. He took his neighbor's concerns to himself and stood up for him, and so did my son. And so because these men and others have become political inconveniences, they now suffer at their hands. And so I say also to all of you, take time to find the abandoned in prison Take time to find your neighbor. Take time to stand behind your neighbor and make a commitment to defend them. Get to know them. Get to know your family. Because until we begin from the bottom up, this nation won't change. We can count on a, say we can count on a president, but I don't think so. I think it has to come from the bottom up, first with ourselves, then our families, then our communities, and so on. And to all those who have took a stand, I personally want to thank for all their dedication, for all the time. I have met some wonderful, wonderful people in this whole journey, and to them, I say thank you. And to the families of the Bundys, the Finnegans, the Coopers, and all the others, I know your days are good and that there are bad days. I thought about it when I was riding the train and how it's like riding the train where all of a sudden you're going and it's light and everything seems good and then you hit a tunnel and everything goes dark but you know at the end of the tunnel there will be light again and so that's what i say to you hang on to that light hang on to your faith Hang on to your conscience. 
Don't ever be afraid to stand for truth. And don't ever be afraid to stand with a good man. May God bless all of you, all the patriots, those that have gone on and those that are still out there. And may we reach out. There's so many needs right now. The families that don't have fathers, they need help financially. One thing I've learned about prisons, they are money-making racket. Everything costs, and it's not cheap. And so reach out to you, if you can, in any way. Challenge yourself to go on the website. Find the names of these people. Write a letter, even if you choose one a day, and let them know that there are people out there that are concerned about them. Don't let them rot away at the hands of an injustice system that is totally broken. Help us to remember the light and to reach out to those that need it. Thanks again.